Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com bringing you a saltwater fly today. Something a little bit different from me but I'm actually going to be using this to fish freshwater. I'm actually going to be tying this. This is a lefty deceiver. Um, it's a pretty common fly. It's caught all kinds of freshwater and saltwater fish. I'm going to be tying it um, freshwater so I can fish for stripers in my local lake here as they make their spawning run this spring. So I'm just going to downsize it a little bit from what some of the saltwater guys might use. Um, use a freshwater hook instead of a saltwater hook and who knows I'll probably end up taking out every year we go to um, Delaware to the shore so I'll probably throw it down there a little bit too while I'm down there. But pretty simple fly um, really just a few materials and it catches bass, stripers, all kinds of things and all your saltwater fish. So give it a try if nothing else just for the experience of learning to tie a different way. Um, this is a bucktail style streamer um, invented by Lefty Cray, of course, Lefty's Deceiver, and uh, it's pretty easy. So let's get into tying it here. What we're going to tie it on is I'm going to use a barbless hook. I'm going to use fire hose 811 in a size 4. And um, you see this is the straight eye hook, not the down eye. That's why we're using this one, to get the straight eye. And for thread, I'm going to use um, 140 denier peacock blue and we're just going to start it on right behind the eye and wrap it back to the bend of the hook all right once we got it back there to the back just trim off our thread and the next thing I'm going to use is out of like a bugger pack what I got this out of is my fly tires variety pack this is a great use for it um, of course you see all different colors in here and you can tie all different colors of lefties deceivers. Um, that's one of the things about it. Here you can see I, I used the yellow one to tie a yellow one. I'm going to tie one in blue like this one. But this bag here, um, I forget what they run, like around $15 or something like that. And here's black, there's yellow, there's greens, um, blues, reds in there. So you got all different kinds of varieties to choose from. What we're going to do is we're going to take two of these saddle feathers, or you can take it off of, um, you could buy like strung saddle hackle, use that for the tails, or take them out of the tail, one of your saddles, if you have a, a saddle with some long fibers, or even the, um, the bottom of a cape would make good ones. So, just going to pluck two of them off of there. Okay, these are pretty long, you can see. And I don't need that much of it. I want to go about twice the length of the hook. So... We're just going to set them up there, get about twice the length of the hook, and I'm going to put these back to back, well, inside to inside, I should say, so they lay against each other well. Okay, when you put them, when you put them inside to inside like that, they make a nice flat feather. So what we're going to do is we're going to go about twice the length, and I'm just going to trim that off get these the length I need them to be okay and then you can tie them one on at a time or both on together I'm going to do them both together here I'm just going to loose loop them down first to get them where I want them so they don't turn around or turn around the hook or anything and get them lined up right there and then we'll tighten it down Tighten it back in the back just a little. There we go. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to tie a little bit of um, Crystal Flash. This is the uh, Pearl Blue. So I'm just going to take about six or so strands of that. Six or ten tops. Oops. Oh, that wasn't good. Just going to pull them out there. There we go. And because I pulled these out all crooked, I'm going to straighten up the ends on them. Okay, now I like to go about three quarters of the way back there. Almost the whole way. And then I'm just going to tie them in on one side. Get three or four nice wraps there. And I'm tying back all about, I don't know, third of the way up of the hook. And then I'm just going to swing this around to the other side and tie tie it down on the other side so I get my crystal flash to go back both sides of the hook and I'll just tie it back to those feathers 
And then we're just going to try to even this out a little bit. Get a nice layer of thread down there. Okay, now I'm going to trim my other side off the match here. Okay. Then we'll set that aside for our next one. Then the next thing I'm going to use is I'm going to use some flat diamond braid, okay? The flat diamond braid will make a nice quick body. Um, and here again, you have a ton of different color options. But we're just going to put that on, and I'll actually tie it up here where I'm going to stop, just to add a little bit of body to it. And try to level it out. Because i got a little bit more material tied in at the back, which is causing the back to be a little bit thicker. So I'll just level that out, and then I'm going to wrap this back, back there to my feather, and then bring my thread back up. And I'm going to stop about two eye lengths, two good solid eye lengths behind it. Now I'm going to take advantage of my rotary vise here, and I'm just going to take my rotary vise and wind this up the hook. Loosen my rotary vise, there we go. And we're just going to cover this with the pearl. This is a nice simple, this flat pearl is a little bit wide, so it covers quickly. This is a nice quick way to do it. You can use um, Flashaboo, Crystal Flash if you want, anything you want here, just to get a flashy body. And then we're going to tie this off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start building up the wing of this. And to do that, we're going to use bucktail. Okay, I'm going to use two colors of bucktail. I'm going to use a natural to get the white. And we're going to use some blue. So first we're going to start out with the white. And what we're going to do is we're just going to trim some off from this area right in here. Okay. And I don't want a lot. I don't want a big, thick, bulky fly here. And just going to trim some off. And that's probably, that's a little bit too much. I'm going to try to even it out here a little bit. And then I'm going to thin it, thin it out. Take some of the smaller ones out of there. So it's mostly the nice longer fibers like this, okay? Then we're going to get them bunched up there. What I want to do is I want to go back about halfway back my feathers. Okay, you see how I'm about halfway back the feathers there. And we're going to hold them up top here. And then I'm going to switch fingers, and I'm going to cut this off at an angle right there where I want it, okay? So we're going to cut it right here, and we're going to get it at a sharp angle. Okay, now that i got this sharp angle, as you can see there, I'm going to set that angle on top of my hook where I want it to go, and I'm going to tie that angle down. Now this will build a natural taper right down to that hook eye, the eye of the hook, and it will naturally make this stand up a little bit which is what we want so we're gonna wrap that down and secure it in place the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the throat on this and I'm just gonna flip up flip upside down here and I'm gonna go a little bit shorter on this I'm gonna get another clump of clump of white and uh, Again, I'm going to pull out my under stuff here, my shorter ones. This one I'm going to go a little bit shorter. I want to go just past the hook. So we're going to switch hands. Trim this off again. Cut it at an angle again. And I'm going to set this on the bottom side of the hook. It's just easier if you have the red revise here. Or if you can flip it upside down. It's a lot easier to do. Not necessary, but it makes it easier. Okay, and then we're just going to wrap that down. Okay, then we'll bring it back up here. Okay. There we go. Now, now we're going to put the top on this. We're going to put some blue. So, we're going to do the same thing. Now, you can take and slide these around. What you want is you want thickness on you want a thin looking head on you want a thin profile on this thin this way okay not thin not as much thin top to bottom so what you can do you don't want to put hair on the sides of the fly is what I'm trying to get at here you can take and 
tease this around to cover to cover up the side of the fly that's fine if you want if you can get her to do that if not leave it like it is and it, it'll be just fine the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some of that blue so I'm going to add blue here and, and again this is a fly to have fun with mix your colors up have different fun experiment with colors I'm tying blue because I'm an old bass fisherman you know before I went really die hard into the fly fishing here I did a lot of bass fishing some tournament fishing and stuff and uh, I fished a lot of blue back with chrome bodies and that's pretty much what this represents so that's always just been a, a personal color preference of mine so I usually if I'm fishing big streamers I have a lot of blue and white ones again we're gonna set it on top I want this about the same length as the white then I'm gonna come in here switch hands to cut this off in an angle I want it actually just a hair shorter but not much Okay, lay that angle on top and I'm going to wrap it down right behind the eye and keep a hold of it until you get it all wrapped down okay there we go got it all wrapped down nice last thing I want to do before my eyes you can see there I'm making a really nice profile with this when it takes on a little bit of water it's going to tuck down and you have a really nice bait fish profile so the last thing I want to do is I want to add a little throat to this. Okay, I'm just going to take a red saddle hackle feather and um, strip some of the fibers off of it. I'm going to get a fairly decent clump there so it's visible. And just get them lined up as best I can. We're going to put it underneath here and tie it in. And it's going to, just going to make a nice little gill like collar for it. And then I'm going to trim this off. Alright, and then I'm just going to tidy up my head. Now, you can finish it there if you want. You know, put some head cement on it there and uh, call it done. If you like, I'm going to add some eyes to it. And uh, for this fly, I'm going to add probably bigger eyes than I should. I, um, I like to add bigger eyes to my flies because... Uh, my foxtail streamer, I had real big eyes to that, and I think it makes a difference. I had a, I've had a lot of success with that fly fishing for steelhead and stuff. Steelhead and salmon, and I really think the bigger eyes, the fish key on it better. So uh, I'm going to add um, a size 5 millimeter eye on this. You can add a 3 or a 4 very easily. It might actually, you might think that looks better. That's fine. But uh, for me, I like to fish a bigger eyed fly, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a size 5 millimeter eye on here. Um, the one I'm putting on is ice, but whatever color you like particularly that you like is fine. And I'm just going to put a little dab of my thick solar as on there. And then place the eye on the side. And I'm going to get it just slightly. You can see how it's just slightly behind the hook eye there. And then I'm going to tack it in place with my light. Okay, and then once it's held in place, I'm going to flip it over and put the other one on. We're just putting just enough there to hold this eye into place so it doesn't move around until I get the, until I get the rest of the solar res in there and can build up that nice round head on it. Okay, now I'm just lining this up, making sure it matches the other one. And make sure it's not crooked or anything. And then we'll tack it into place again, the other side. Alright, and lastly, we're going to come in and we're going to build up a head with this. And we're just going to put our, our solar as UV, uh, the thick here is what we're using. And I'm just going to fill in the gap between the two eyes on the top. Going to cover the eyes a little bit. Just slightly covering the eyes. And then fill in that gap in the bottom there. And again, this is another time that rotary vise comes in real handy. Then I'm just going to take my rotary vise and spin it to level that all out. And you just spin it pretty good here this time. I got a little ball of it there. There we go. 
that looks pretty good and then once I get it all leveled out we're just gonna hit it with the light and it's cured and there you go you have Lefty's Deceiver um, this is a a great all-around fishing pattern geared towards the saltwater guys is originated for the saltwater guys but it works just as well in freshwater for you know for a lot of your bass species uh, if I was down in Miami again fishing for peacocks I would be throwing this no doubt um, so give it a try you can even downsize it even a lot more and try it out for trout I wouldn't doubt that the trout would hit this so uh, like I said a couple pieces of material it's not hard to tie and it's probably a lot of material that you already have laying around your shop other than maybe the hooks. Get yourself a big saltwater hook if you want to try it out for salt. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm going to try to bring you some more saltwater flies here as we go. Uh, just to branch out a little bit. And um, just it's fun to tie. It's fun to tie something different every now and then. So thanks for watching. All the material you need to tie it. You can find it at our shop. WholesingersFlyShop.com And until next time. Please take the time to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our Facebook and our Instagram. And see you later. I'm Sean Holsinger. Thank mm -hmm. you.